Andy Muirhead. On 936 ABC Hobart. 23 minutes past 7 on 936 ABC Hobart. What were you doing... When you were in year 11, studying hard, going out, partying, maybe having a few sneaky beers every now and then, well, Hugh Greenwood certainly isn't doing any of that. Good morning, Hugh. Good morning, how are you? Not bad. We've spoken to you over the last year, so everybody knows who you are. Tasmanian basketballer playing with the Boomers. Last time we spoke to you, you just got back from China, and yeah. you picked up the medal there. Yeah, yeah. Which was huge, a huge thing to do. Now we get you back into the studio. You're back in Hobart for a couple of weeks, and you've just come back from Italy. Yep, yep, yeah. I spent um, three weeks overseas in Italy, and now I'm back for a week spending time with the family, so it's all happening again. And then back to a- AIS? Yep, back to AIS and finish off the school year. So When do you finish school year with AIS? Um, we finish in November, so around the same time as, as here. So, yeah, got to go back and finish year 11 and do end-of-year exams. Over summer break, do you actually get a break? Do you stop training? Or yep, do you... I come back for about six or seven weeks, so that's my big end-of-year break, so I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. You, uh, it seems with basketball these days that you just travel from country to country, competition to competition. You don't actually get a break, and that's where injuries start. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, with this, because uh, our season starts early next year, they want us to get a break kind of thing, and next year is going to be pretty hectic with a lot of lot more overseas tours and stuff. So, yeah, it's good to get a break and clear your mind kind of thing. We were just watching a little clip in the studio with the sound down of NBL highlights, yeah. the National Basketball League here in Australia. How's that league travelling at the moment? We heard, you know, a year ago, everyone was in trouble. More and more money was leaving the sport. Tigers were going to fold. Melbourne Tigers, one of the big four teams that's always been there. Is it in a good state at the moment? Um, well, yeah, like you said, over the last couple of years, it's been a bit of a struggle. But um, this year, with with the new um, kind of the NBL system and new teams and stuff, it's definitely picked up again. And seeing the guys playing with some of the players on TV, they, they said it's, it's good. And it's a good competitive league, but it's just... It's not as good as it used to be, but it looks like it's improving, definitely. So will you go there, or will you head to college in the States? Um, I want to head to college in the States, and then I'll see where that takes me, whether that takes me back here to Australia or Europe or, or that kind of place. Well, that's the thing. Being with the AIS in Italy the last couple of weeks, mm. I mean, Italy's the big dollars are in Italy yeah. for basketball. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you see the games over there, and you see the system there. Is that a tough system to play in in Italy, though? You've got the language barrier and everything else. Yeah, and no, I thought I'd, I would have learned a little bit more Italian, but I I didn't, but um, <laughs> no, it's it's different style of play. It took me a few games to kind of get used to the the European play because each each country has their own kind of style. But it's it's a beautiful place in Italy, so I could you could definitely live there. But um, yeah, it's just a matter of getting used to it. And it doesn't hurt the millions of dollars that no, they pay per season. <laughs> that, that makes it all a little bit yeah. easier to take. When you go to international competitions like that, and you're you're playing in Italy or China, is the refereeing different between different places? Yeah, the refereeing is different. We um. Because it was more of a, a tour, it wasn't a tournament. They, they, most of the teams supplied their own referees, so you get the home calls right, and just. Okay. They have their different kind of rules. They have different views on the different rules, so it, we, it gets called a lot different. So we found that a, a bit difficult because um, for most of the guys, it was their first overseas exposure. So. Getting used to that was different, but it's always challenging and it's always good because you're going to get those over your career. Can you contain that as a team or as a player, though? When you get a bad call, yeah. how do you stop it eating away at the whole team? Yeah, it's a couple of calls aren't too bad, but when you get continual calls, it's it's all right. But um, our coaches, well, they, they let us know it's always going to happen and they yeah. keep us under control. Are they pretty harsh on you of keeping you under control and keeping your temper under control on the, on the court? Yeah, yeah, they are. Because, um, well, it doesn't matter what you say because they, really, they can't gonna, understand yeah, you. Yeah, know, they're not so. going to change. <laughs> they can't understand. Yeah, yeah that's a point. Yeah. <laughs> I think that some of the, the signals and some of the, the raised voice yeah, give an true. indication of, yeah. of how, what you're thinking. So AIS, they've got a base over in Italy, is that right? Yeah, they um in Italy they have the ETC, which is the European Training Centre there. So it was good because they, they supplied us with a lot of stuff. So it made it a lot easier because I think cycling's the cycling AS program is based in, in Italy. So mm-hmm. it was really helpful. And you really need that to be in touch with the European competition. You yeah. need to have that base there. Yeah. And, and you're kind of the elder statesman on the tour now. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I've been there the longest now. So it's it's funny going from the baby up to the to the leader of the ranks. But it was good experience. and well, like one of my first times in a few years to be kind of the the leader of the group, so it was great. Do you feel more pressure that way, that on tour you have to lead the younger guys through? Yeah, um, a little bit. It was funny, I 
like on the court, um, we'd all played together. Well, most of us had played together, but the guys that didn't play together, it was it was a new experience. But it was I found it more off the court that I had to kind of bring the more leadership role because it was just it was their first time travelling and it was just funny the jet lag and just the living. We stayed at like five or six different places, so it was pretty hectic. So I found myself off the court having to be more of a leader than on the court. Speaking to Hugh Greenwood, the sporting in the studio, Tasmanian basketballer, and he's with the AIS and just got back from a tour in Italy. How do you balance that? Because you're the leader of the team. You've got to be friends with everybody on the team as well. But do you have to lay down the law and say, no, you can't sneak out, you can't go and enjoy yeah. Italy at night? Or <laughs> is there is there some sort of balance there? No, nah, there's, there's there's leniency. Our coaches let us, because we're, we're, we're young men, you know, so they, they let us go do our thing because they know we're going to be responsible and... Um, yeah, our coaches just tell us to be classy. So we're just being a leader in the group. If you see something that's wrong, you just let them know, and you, you don't you don't blow up at them, but you just give them a comment. You know, it's not right thing. But um, no, everyone's. It's, it's and at that stage of your career, none of you are, are making millions of dollars. None no. of you are, are placed way above the rest of the team. Is it easier that way that the egos haven't quite grown at this stage? Yeah, no, it's, it's funny. Everyone has their own individual ego, <laughs> their bits and pieces. But um, no, overall, it's a, it was a great, it was a great group and fun group to to be around. To. Are you happy with the way you're playing at the moment? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy. The season's kind of died down, but um, to get caught up to the boomers not long ago was pretty was pretty good, and it was kind of a reward for all the hard work that I've put in. And um, Italy was was good. We well, we played 11 games and won all 11 games. So as a team, we played really well, and um, our coaches were happy. So hopefully, we can transfer that onto the Siebel season next year. And we have a lot of, like I said, we got a lot of overseas trips. So if we can transfer that, it'll be great. Yeah, it will be. It'd be huge. What about um, scouts and things and pressure in in Italy? When you go to places like China and Italy, sure you're playing within the team and you're playing within the system. But is do you have in the back of your mind wonder who's watching? Who's in the yeah? Crowd? You do wonder who's watching. It's uh, it was funny seeing a couple of American college teams over there recruiting some of the older guys in our team. It was funny, but um, how they managed to find us in in Italy, but um. Uh, wow. European wise, I'm not looking to go there yet. I, I want to go to college first, so there's someone always watching, and then they they want to know how you go in Italy, so you want to play well and all that kind of how stuff. How do you not so. just jump at the first college that comes along, though? I know, yeah, no, the true. coach comes in and you know they're really professional about how they recruit players. Yeah. And you get the opportunity. Would you be able to sit back and weigh up your options, or do you just run? Yeah, with no. It? Our head coach is really good with that. He's been well. He's been with the program a long time, so he's seen a lot of players go on, and he knows which colleges are the right colleges and the wrong colleges. And you still got. I've still got to 2011 before I head to college, so to make to to commit to one college now would be yeah. would be silly because you want to um, check out all your best options to see how you improve as a it's player. It's going to be a pretty stressful year next year. Yeah, definitely. How do your parents cope with it all? No, the parents are fine with it. They're fine with it. They just I send them through the different colleges and they they check it out for me and they help me out and they see if they offer the courses that I want to do and that kind of helps as well with the colleges. Yeah. So if they were off, if colleges don't offer the course that I want, then you know, but um and yeah. That's, that's pretty good. It's a huge year coming up. Look, thanks for coming in early. Oh, I'm, on your, your one break, we still get you in early to come in and talk on the radio. It's very unfair, but good to catch up with you. Yeah, we'll no, catch up definitely. with you in a, in a few weeks before the end of uh, the school year. Yep, yeah, definitely. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks for that. It's easy. Hugh Greenwood coming in and having a chat to us this morning on 936 ABC Hobart, Tasmanian basketballer playing with the Boomers and...